I, I live here in Belarus and it's currently July 2022. And I've had a lot of questions in the comment section asking about what kind of shops are there in Belarus? Do they have Western brands, uh, Western goods and so forth? So I'm gonna answer that question today. I'm gonna to talk about different industries and what Western uh, retailers are here representing those industries. And I'm also gonna talk about the sanctions and their effect on the operating of these particular uh, retailers and outlets and brands that come from the West here. So the most visible thing here, the most visible Western influence here, is definitely the fast food chains. So I'm coming up to a McDonald's here, and McDonald's has definitely got the deepest market penetration here. There are a lot of McDonald's. I don't know how many, I would say at least 20 in the city of Minsk. And I'll just show you here, you've got the beautiful golden arches as it rains down here. 1.9 rubles, that's around uh, about 70 cents for a soft serve cone there. And it's definitely the most popular of them. And I've noticed uh, it's popular with youngsters, families, everybody really. That's like the number one uh, fast food chain here. Burger King, there's not that many Burger Kings around, but here is one. And then across the road, we've got a big KFC. KFC is a bit more popular than Burger King here. There's quite a few of these. Indeed, there's another one just two minutes down the street here. Just walk out another one. And you almost make up the Domino's there as well. It's got a keen eye. You can kind of see a Domino's there just on the right uh, as well. So Domino's Pizza, KFC, Burger King, McDonald's. These seem to be the four fast food operators that are here. And these have uh, not changed their operations that I'm aware of uh since uh february this year i also throw in some uh online uh retailers as well and online operators uh airbnb and skyscanner uh two of the most popular for people traveling around to different places uh airbnb stopped operating here uh almost instantly uh back in february march um it still works if you want to book somewhere else like if you log in from a belarusian ip address and you want to book an apartment in uh, Lithuania and that's fine but there's no listings here in Belarus no active listings uh, then the Skyscanner which is a website you can use to coordinate some uh, air flights uh, that stopped working uh, here as well uh, and they don't report uh, any airlines that fly here so I'm just looking down at the moment because I'm just walking downstairs of course um, yeah, they don't report uh, Balavia or some of the other Starn Airlines that are also flying to and from uh, Belarus. So those two have, have cut Belarus off. One other thing I wanted to mention was uh, Visa and MasterCard because they stopped or supposedly stopped cross-border transactions uh, between Belarus and the rest of the world. But for me, actually, it works fine. My MasterCard and Visas work fine here. Um, and indeed, what made me think of this is that Visa promotes aggressively here like it's popping up on my instagram feed it's popping up uh there's a a little promotional tent thing in dana mall like they're pushing promotion here but they're not allowing belarusians to lose a card elsewhere so belarusians have to use a card here but nowhere else so you see what they're doing they're just kind of like getting on board the whole thing but really they're prepping this market and growing it because i know this will end at some stage and they can just allow cross uh, border transactions so you can see they're maybe not as committed to the idea of sanctions as some of the other companies are i almost forgot paypal paypal is also not working uh here in belarus at the moment in terms of banks i'm pretty sure there's actually no western banks here at all i just walked past alpha bank which i believe is russian um so that's not working because of the the sanctions um and it being a russian bank but all the other banks are working on some level here again they're not western banks but um depends how closely aligned they are with the government actually so the more closely aligned they are the less likely they're going to work uh, with foreign cards but as i say, there's no western banks here at all there is union pay which is a chinese uh, bank but uh, that's all the rest are just uh, belarusian and a handful of russian ones as well all right let's talk retail i'm getting up here to galleria minsk this is probably the most touristy of all the shopping centers uh, so here, in terms of retail outlets, so you have retail outlets such as H&M here. Also, we have um, Zara, not this one, we have Zara here in Belarus. We also have De Facto and New Yorker. They're the only four clothing brands that I can think of that are Western here. These are, these are retail outlets, but of course we actually have a lot of Western goods being sold in local shops. So let's differentiate. Now H&M, 
it's got all the ads out here and these advertisements have actually been updated. These pictures were different when I was here a few weeks ago. But if we go inside and H&M is shut, they shut because of sanctions. Uh, pretty much the first week of, of the Ukrainian conflict actually, I think back in the last week of February. So they're shut. Uh, I'll come inside and show you here. But no Zara's, no Mango's have been shut. Uh, no one else, New Yorker, none of these other um, retail outlets have been shut. But you can see here, this is quite a big H&M. And it had the uh, doors pulled down on it almost five months ago now. It's a big two level H&M here. Um, it's the only one that's actually shut out of all of these brands. All these Western brands are uh, still operating here, outlets. I'll show you what it says. Oh, there's a Samsung shop right there. So that Samsung is still uh, definitely here. So we have a notice there if you fancy your Russian language. I can't be bothered translating it for you, sorry about that. And as well as Samsung, we have an iStore, premium reseller of Apple goods. So this seems to be all operating as normal. And I want to show you some shoes, because we have a lot of Nikes here. American shoe brands are really a thing. So I'm just going to go up to uh, a Belarusian style shop that sells Nikes and Adidas. Legitimate ones, uh, real ones. And I'll just show you the prices so you can see. Here we have Mango. Um, quite a famous clothing store. Also Pierre Cardin here as well. You'll see. Uh, quite a well known old school brand couple more random branded stores that I wasn't aware of. Uh, New Balance and also Puma there. You can probably just see with the red uh, there. Also a Puma specialist shop. You see this one here, Multisport. It has Under Armour, Nike, Reebok, Adidas. That's more typical to have a, what I assume Multisport is just a Belarusian. I could be wrong uh, with the brand goods in there. Let's just wander around to Sportsmaster. This is the sports stop. Uh, you'll know this place here as well, Chinese uh, phones here. We've got a sneaker bar here. Let's go in here and I'll pick out a couple of shoes for you and you can see uh, the prices involved. So there's some juicy Nikes here. Some Asics. Let's pick up a couple and see. So that, uh, here's an obviously Nike one. Four fifty rubles. That's around uh, current exchange rate is about two point seven. It's around one hundred and sixty uh, US dollars. This is a familiar looking shoe. You probably know it quite well. This is six oh nine. So this will be around two hundred and thirty ish US dollars. Let's see if we can find a really well known, popular styling. I oh, got some more mics over here. Some pretty. Familiar yeah, Adidas ones, this is 469. So these ones here would be around, uh, my brain's melting, 170 USD. Higher top version, it looks like the same thing, uh, same price, 170 as well. Some basic Nikes here, Nike Air on sale apparently, it's 509, which would be around 180 uh, US dollars. Some Air Max, that's 499, so again around 170. 180 for those. Do let me know whatever country you're in, uh, how much these would be in your country. Here's another very familiar. I had these shoes when I was a kid in the early 90s. Oh my goodness. There you got 450 rubles as well. So again, it's around 150, uh, 160 USD. I'll show you a couple more. Oh, there's some Jordans. All right, here. This one is, it's faded because it's been here so long, 800. So that's around. Three, 300 USD for those Jordans. These nice red Jordans here are 409, quite cheap, about 150, 150 USD. All right, that'll do us. Let's go to the electronic shop and I'll show you some phone prices. Uh, again, if you know these shoe types and you've seen these around before and you know how much they cost in your country, let me know because I have a hunch that uh, they would have gone up considerably given the tariffs and uh, other. Uh, political tools in place at the moment. <clears throat> so 
There's Hewlett Packard as well. One more Western branded shop. As you can see, probably 85% of these shops are local, uh, local brands, or maybe some are Russian brands as well. Uh, let's walk in. Uh, this Five Element. This is like the electronic store. Let's just quickly check a couple of things. All right, we've got Galaxy. S22 that's not actually there. Oh, all these prices are missing here. So a lot of the prices are missing, which is kind of odd. Uh, let's go Xiaomi. At least the prices are here. So uh, 11, 1500 rubles. Again, 2.7 exchange rate. It's just over 500. Uh, 12 model, a bit newer. Um, just over a thousand dollars for that. Let me try and find some Apple and Samsung. All right, here's Samsung uh, S20 FE. Uh, it's around 650, maybe 700. Uh, S21, uh, almost 1,000 uh, US dollars. Here's a fancy one S21 Ultra. This is uh, 1400 Do let me know, if you're a bit of a guru at this stuff, do let me know what these costs are in your country. We can compare prices. This will give you a bit of a sense of the Western brand impact here in Belarus. And in terms of sanctions, you can see that it's mainly online is where the influence is. A little bit from Visa and MasterCard, although pretty token. Uh, then the Airbnb, Skyscanner, PayPal have all hit pretty hard. Uh, H&M is the only retailer that has left. And I don't, I'm not aware of any other thing going on. So it's limited to just those effects. Of course, there are price changes. So let me know about those price changes. If you do know the prices of those uh, sneakers or of the phones in your country, uh, let me know and we'll see if they've gone up or not. Because when I first arrived here, I had just bought a phone in Australia and I compared the price and it was identical to here, identical price. So if they are higher now to a more competitive market like Australia, then we'll know uh, what's caused this price increase.